Can you hear me now? Okay, whatever, I guess we'll just start the video. I've been playing Super Monkey Ball since the day I was born. Well, technically it was 22 years after that, but 22 years, many shmoo years, am I right? What do you mean, no? Okay, yeah, I missed out on Super Monkey Ball as a kid, but it still somehow always felt like it's been a part of my life. If I wasn't playing the game myself, I at least got to see my friends playing it, my uncles playing it, maybe trying out a party game with them, or doing freaking dick flip roundhouse cutbacks as I and Sonic Riders. But sitting down and busting out Super Monkey Ball to legitimately experience those baboon booty cheeks in my own two hands didn't happen for the first time until like three months ago. It was because my cousins came to town to visit from Oregon and I live in Utah. So unless staring at rocks and getting married four times sounds like a fun recreational activity to you, then there's not really much to do out here. So outside of the occasional restaurant or escape room, I know we'd be spending most of our time inside playing video games and rewatching the entire MCU goddamn it Ultron is sexy. But that's beside the point. My cousins aren't the most hardcore gamer girls, all right? So I knew how to find a game that was easy to pick up, easy to control, yet challenging, and as addictive as all, this was all heck. And even though I never played a monkey ball game on my own by this point, for whatever reason, I, I was wandering around my dome when he decided to physically assault my brain, giving me an idea and an aneurysm. And for the 10 days that they were out here, whenever we had more than 20 minutes to spare, you better believe we spent it in monkey ball bliss. Of, of course, bliss being monkey ball terms for pain, blood, and trying to prevent your thumb from breaking the goddamn sound barrier. But oh my god, every minute was just fun. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. The concept is so cool, the music is such a vibe, the level design is so intuitive yet interesting, and the controls just... Ah! So yeah, it would be a massive understatement to say, yeah, I've been into it lately. So making this video was really just an excuse to go wacky madoodle Dr. Doolittle mode and talk yeah. about the life and potential death. M maybe not. Maybe someone could come in with a pair of shock paddles and give her poor little monkey boy the old taze of life. I don't know. But let's find out together. Right now. Get a load of this guy. This is Toshihiro Nagoshi, the man who came up with the core concept and directed the development of the very first Monkey Ball game. He was Sega's kind of go-to guy for making arcade games so good that any blind person who came within a five foot radius of one of his machines would be granted the power of sight. Uh, until they left the five foot radius where, where they'd immediately go blind again. I mean, on top of Monkey Ball, this man worked on Daytona USA, Virtua Fighter, and later on the GameCube produced F-Zero GX, but we're not talking about the GameCube yet, so hold your horse balls. Slow your roll. I could have said slow your roll. He was looking to make a game that was easy to pick up and play, but also wouldn't choke the change out of a cheap game developing chimp. <laughs> so he, he took inspiration from the simplest to control game as Thunderdome could think of. Marble mazes. The concept is simple. You got a ball. You got a maze. Oh, and one last thing. Maybe you heard of it. You got gravity. <coughs> All you gotta do is tilt the stage to get the ball to the goal. But you better believe Mr. Tushihiro Nagashi over here who wasn't just gonna straight up steal that idea and make a digital version of it. He wanted something hot. He wanted something original. He wanted monkey ball. Well, actually, actually there wasn't a monkey at first so he just wanted, he wanted ball. So let's take a little looksy poop at what the transition from marble maze to monkey ball look like. Starting with the ball and the maze, first we should bring the camera down so it feels more like you are the ball. Now keep in mind we want to feel like we are the ball, but that doesn't mean that we're controlling the ball. Nah, we, we still control on the stage. But now with the camera down here, there's all these walls so we don't know where the, and excuse my language, where the frick to go. Taking out the walls are to move the challenge, so how about we make gaps that you could fall in instead, so there's still a challenge and you can still see the goal. But now it's too convoluted without a bird's eye view to find out which direction you should take to even get there. So let's make the stages more simple and less focused on navigating a maze, but rather balancing and trying to stay on the stage. And lastly, it's still kind of hard to tell what direction you're rolling in, so let's slap a character in that ball. Hey yo, our sweet and lovely employee Mika Kojima drew this monkey. So how about we give him some big ass ears and slap him in that ball? Okay, but why would we give him big ass ears? I just want someone to know my pain! I just heard a cockroach rip ass from a cubicle three floors below us! And thus, Monkey Ball was born. A lot of people would say that Monkey Ball was a ripoff of Mario Marble Madness, which has similar concepts, but if you ask me, it's more like these games are two different takes on a video game interpretation of a good old fashioned marble maze. And as you can imagine, much like every mixtape I've ever made, it was a hit. Kids would be diving headfirst into these machines to spend every last coin from their dead grandfather's will just to get past the first 10 stages because it's not, it's, it's 
not an easy game. So with yet another hit coming from the deity named Nagoshi, Sega decided it was time to give him his own game development division that would focus on making some synonym for very good home console titles and it was called Amusement Vision. So things were really looking up for this young stud, but at the same time, things were looking down for old Sega. Their one big hit console that was supposed to set them apart from Nintendo, the Dreamcast, was failing. So with no home consoles really popping on the game market from Sega, who was Amusement Vision gonna make games for? Thankfully, Nintendo, like the big loving mama bird they are, barfed in Sega's mouth and said, hey, why don't you come and make some games for our next big home console? And with that came Amusement Vision's first big project, make a launch title for Nintendo's GameCube, which is coming out in less than a year. Much love. Less than a year? We haven't even existed for a year. How are we supposed to pump out an entire game in that time? Even if we poured in an arcade game, we'd still have to get it working on completely different hardware. All right, all right, uh, what do we got? Virtua Fighter? Daytona USA? Those games would be too complicated to port. Wait, Monkey Ball. It's perfect. It's just a ball, a maze, and grab it! And on September 14th, 2001, Monkey Ball was released on the GameCube in Japan with some sleek ass new particle effects, nine new master mode stages, six party games for multiplayer Monkey Mayhem, and the fourth member of the DK crew. Gone, gone. Is, is that racist to Monkey Kind? Oh yeah, and the word super. And you better believe that when it was released in Japan, it was not actually all that popular. But for whatever reason, when it released three months later in the US, people went bananas, which sparked the golden years for the Monkey Ball franchise. Now, as I go through these titles, you'll find that the Monkey Ball series timeline is a bit like a yin yang kind of deal. Having good with a little hint of bad in the first half of the timeline, and then bad with a little hint of good in the later half. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Also, I'm gonna be listing these off faster than the little guy got shaken baby syndrome. You know, cause he, yeah, that, that joke probably doesn't need explaining. All right, so for the good big titles in yearly order, first up in 2001, we got Super Monkey Ball, which introduced people to the fun, challenging, addictive, simple, yet genius philosophy of navigating either I, I, Mimi, Baby, or Gon Gon to the end of a course where they do a little boogie and move on to the next level, setting the standard for titles going forward. Then in 2002, we got Super Monkey Ball Jr., which was like regular Super Monkey Ball, but squashed down and watered down to fit on a GBA. What? You heard me right. What's not the Go-Gurts? We've got places to be and go posts to see. You know what I'm saying? They used the same tech that made Star Fox on the SNES look 3D for this game. It had fewer stages and had to be controlled with the D-pad, but was pretty good for what it was. Then also in 2002, we got Super Monkey Ball 2, which is like Super Monkey Ball except squashed up and watered up. We got switches that changed the speed of the transforming stages. We got 150 brand new stages, a buttload of new mini games, and a story mode with an antagonist named Dr. Bad Boon. What the fuck? Then in 2005, we got Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, which took the best of both Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 and made them slurp up a spaghetti noodle from two separate ends where they eventually kiss in the middle. Oh my god. It took the best from the two previous games and added some brand new stages to reach a total of 300 stages. Along with new mini games, Dr. Bad Boon is still here. Oh my god! <laughs> what, what am I? What am I doing? Is that? Is that an accent? <laughs> then also in 2005, we got Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll for the DS, which was more portable Monkey Ball with its great level design and hints of a cutesy new art style. One caveat is that this one was controlled with either the D-pad or a touchscreen, making it super challenging. Some would say too challenging. But also, Android emulators are a thing, and if you use one of those phone Joy-Con things, it's actually a pretty solid game. That wasn't me. I didn't say it, because I think that's illegal. And then in 2006, we got Super Monkey Ball Adventure. Spoiler warning, remember how I said a little bad in the good? This is it. So you know how Super Monkey Ball was a fun puzzle game with precise controls and interesting stage designs? This is a 3D platformer where you can't platform because there isn't a damn jump button in Super Monkey Ball yet. So unless you're gonna take II out of the ball, which they didn't, then 3D platforming is not a territory these monkeys should tread. Also the physics engine was reused from this ball rolling section and Crash Twin Sanity, so even the classic challenge mode was boned. Ignoring that last little poop stain, this was the golden era of Monkey Ball, with these three easily being the most popular since they were the most true to the core concepts the original arcade cabinet set in place. But while life was looking all dandy for the bad Baboon Boys, Jesus had secretly put out a hit on the series, and the hitman was none other than the PS2 classic known as Yakuza, a series created by Nagoshi and his team that he felt very passionate about. Turns out he didn't think very highly of the Monkey Ball franchise he created, saying, quote, still, honestly, I don't know why it sold well. Yeah, I mean, kind of, kind of a slap in the penis to the Monkey Ball fans, but it, it is what it is. With that being said, he was still wrapping up executive production on one last Monkey Ball game, one known as Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. So this title was the first game to land on the bad side of our little yin-yang diagram we got here. Now, I understand some people do like this game. 
I also understand some people like Hitler. Now, even if this game wasn't terrible on its own, it still marked the beginning of the downfall to the Monkey Ball series since it set in place two bad table manners that led this baby to grow up and become a serial knifer. So, okay, maybe, that, maybe that's a little dramatic. Not to some, actually. Bad Table Manner number one. Monkey Ball is praised for its creative level design that took into account the extremely simple controls and the precision you get when using just a thumbstick. This game was controlled using the Wii's motion controls. And a jump button. Bad Table Manner number two, I'm making a shout out on my Twitter.com at Shadow is a bit- Monkey Ball's addictive nature was brought on by its controls tied with its difficulty, giving all the control in the world to the players so they know if they screw up, it's on them. And that encourages them to keep playing and getting better. This game was riddled with guardrails cause oh, we don't, we don't want to make it too difficult for the little blind hamster that's playing our video game to beat a level. And after all this, Sega had acknowledged Nagoshi's shift in focus from Super Monkey Ball to Yakuza. So when they approached him to see if he still wanted to lead production for future Monkey Ball titles, his response was, Set the hip hop, the hippie to the hippie to hip hip hop, you don't stop the rocket set a bang bang boogie set up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to be. Or something like that. Wait, he said no. And was Sega just letting whoever the hell they feel like produce these games and the bad table manners set in place by the last big Monkey Ball title were now led to the downfall of the modern titles. Once again, I'ma rapid fire these titles off, so uh, hold your balls, partner. So for the big bad titles in yearly order, first up in 2006, we got Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, which was like if Nagoshi dumped you in your own 2001 Subaru Outback and before you left the car, let a massive one rip and left you to hang out in the poopy aroma and watch him walk off with his new boyfriend. The game took away the precise controls fans of the series came to love and favor emotion controls, which prompted them to add guardrails to make sure the controls didn't feel too unfair, stripping away the challenging, addictive nature of the series and setting Monkey Ball on a downward spiral. Then in 2010 we got Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll, which was where Sega was like, what, you don't like controlling the ball with your hands? Fine, we'll make you use your feet then, and introduce compatibility with the Wii's balance board, amplifying the sins of Banana Blitz tenfold since now the guardrails are so prominent that it's just straight up impossible to die in a bunch of the levels. Then in 2011 we got Super Monkey Ball 3D, which was almost like Banana Blitz but on the go. I mean, I, I didn't really plan on taking Banana Blitz out of the trash can, so why would I want it on the go? This was the first time in a well that we had seen a monkey ball game with thumbstick controls, but uh, surprise surprise, the stages were still on blind hamster mode, so I'm still smelling that fart, Nagoshi. Then finally, in 2012, we're introduced to the one bit of good on the bad side of the monkey ball timeline, Super Monkey Ball Banana Splits. It was analog control like any good monkey ball should be, and the guardrails for the most part were pretty absent. Finally, a monkey ball game with decent controls and level designs, a sigh of relief for the monkey ball fans. Except, ex except for one teensy weensy detail. It was on the PS Vita! Who, outside of Japan, even has one of these things? This, as you can see, was a real dark time for the fans of this franchise. Sega just threw the franchise to whoever would work on it, and I don't know whose decision it was to keep trying to innovate on this formula, but if you ask me, Super Monkey Ball has such a good core concept that no one should worry about these games feeling too samey. Damn, we could be on Super Monkey Ball 8 now with the fan base happy and going strong, instead of the Monkey Ball catalog being absolutely drowned in monkey manure. And after that last PS Vita title that no one really got to touch, it was a real long time before there was any word on a big new Monkey Ball title. Until the year 2018 where rumors of a new Super Monkey Ball arose due to Sega renewing the Tapigoto trademark, which is its Japanese title. And when 2019 finally rolled around, oh baby did we get some blue monkey balls. The big quote unquote new Super Monkey Ball turned out to be a remaster, which would be fine if you picked literally any of the games people were asking for, but it was a remaster of Banana Blitz. I think Nick Robinson put it best himself when he said, It's like if Sega forgot that Sonic existed for most of a decade, and then triumphantly announced Sonic's return by proudly announcing that they were remaking and remastering Sonic 06. And you might be thinking, okay, yeah, this sucks, but it's not like anyone is mob boss mama burdening this game down your throat and being like, now give me all your freaking money. But the thing is, after the release of this game, an interview surfaced with the producer of this remake, Masao Shirasaki, saying that Sega is willing to fund a remake and remaster of the original two games, and maybe even make a brand new game if, and only if, Banana Blitz HD sells well. Oh. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that that's really cool. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. So expecting one of the worst games in the series to make record high sales and fund a completely new Super Monkey Ball sounds like spit, right? You can imagine the fan base to this series would be real nervous about the fate of their poor little Ai, Ai who now looks like a veteran of 14 different world wars. And for a couple of years, it was all looking real grim. I mean, hell, I even started making this video planning on talking about the life and death of this series and how June, the 20th anniversary of Monkey Ball rolled around 
pun intended, with no word of a new game. But then... Back, baby! Remasters of the original three golden gems of this series, Ai Ai, Mimi, Baby, and Gon Gon are back! We got the classic challenge mode, we got the story mode, Dr. Bad Boon, ah! We got a new special mode with things like time attack, where don't touch the bananas cause they'll kill you mode. Jumping is here, wait, wait, jumping is here? Oh, it's off by default, but it's an option? Alright, that's cool. We got at least four new characters including Yon Yon and Doctor from Banana Blitz along with Sonic and Tails. Yo! Yo! They're rocking their new art styles with a banging new soundtrack, but hey, if you like the original look and their original soundtrack, we got that too! Behind a paywall. And over 100 character customization options? Alright, I can, I can die now. To a lot of people, this seemed impossible. Banana Blitz HD selling well enough for this to actually happen, but thankfully the Switch as a console sold so well that even games like Senran Kaguda Peach Ball sold well, which, which is a game where you play pinball with like a, a big titty anime girl just kind of hanging out on the machine. I couldn't, I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. So Banana Blitz HD sold well. We got the remakes. Who was responsible for this? Well, Masao Shirasaki, who Sega chose to lead the remake of Banana Blitz, was actually a big fan of Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 as a kid. And when he saw what Sega was doing to the Monkey Ball series and, and saw an opportunity to go up to Sega and be like, Hey, uh, yeah, you got, a, you got a little Baba Ganoush on your face. And clean up Sega's Monkey Ball franchise by remaking the classics, he took that opportunity up in a heartbeat. And so this year, 2021, on October 5th, we'll be receiving the long-awaited revitalization of the Super Monkey Ball series from someone who loved the classics as a kid. And when this game sells well, then we'll be receiving a brand new Monkey Ball game by someone who understands what makes a good Super Monkey Ball. I remember as a kid thinking about how I wanted to grow up and make sequels to video game series that I loved, and now other kids who had that same dream and way more talent are now adults making those dreams a reality. And it's so cool. I guess that's about all I had to say. I was only recently introduced to this series and I'm so lucky that I didn't have to live through all the trauma that this series has brought longtime fans. But when I properly played Super Monkey Ball for the first time just a few months ago, it instantly became one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. So thank you to the fans of Monkey Ball for staying strong. Thank you to Masao Shirasaki for pretty much restoring order in the universe. And thank you for watching this long ass video. Hey, thanks for watching. I, I know I just said that, but also it, that was audio from like four months ago, so I kind of feel the need to say it again. Seriously, thank you for sticking all the way through. So, yeah, if you enjoyed that, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Please like and share. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to keep updated with me. If you're scared that I might disappear for another long time again, I will. I'll try not to make that, you know, let that happen. But yeah, I'm at legit Slippy Boy. And also while you're there, you should follow Pyrite, who uh, did the amazing voice acting earlier in this video. The only bit of good voice acting here. And he's done stuff for the channel before. You can hear his talent on an earlier video of mine that I did. Uh, the 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 short film of, of the Gus and Eddie sketch um, and yeah just everything he sends me freaking blows me away like it's just it's great I don't know I love this I love his abilities <laughs> and also um Cherim you should go follow Cherim too that's uh he, he's the one who supplied me with pretty much all the footage for this uh video like I, I he I asked him if I could you know, use his footage because his entire channel just is loaded with monkey ball content and other stuff. And he was super cool about it. And so I'd like to shout him out. I'd like you go follow his Twitter and his, uh, both of their informations, Pirates and Cherim's will be down in the description below. Um, also Cherim just dropped a, uh, review of Banana Mania, which is, uh, definitely worth checking out if you, if you know what's good for you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, I, so this video, I wanted to talk about, like, more than just the life of the series. I wanted to bring up, like, the mod packs, uh, rolled out, which is, like, kind of the Sonic Mania moment for this series, where they, you know, really, uh, appease the core fans, um, in ways that the modern titles haven't been able to do. And also the speedrunning scene is crazy for this series, which, man, I wish I got to talk about that, but I don't know, maybe I'll have to return to this series in the future. But yeah, you know, I took the more like documentary approach. 
but yeah, let me know what you thought of that, of, you know, the writing, the pacing, the jokes, the, you know, maybe the pixel art or, uh, you know, critique me in any kind of way. I'd like to grow. But if you just want to shout a compliment, I mean, that that's great, too. Motivates me. So whatever you want to do. Um, I had an idea for an intro and an outro, which I'm still going to do, but I didn't have enough time to animate and put it on this video. So you'll see it in the, probably the next video if it's not the update. Um, and I'm really excited for you to see what it looks like because it's kind of just going to tie this whole aesthetic together. But yeah, it is currently 1.52 a.m. Uh, October 5th and Banana Mania comes out. October 5th, so <laughs> yeah, I've kind of got to wrap this up. I don't have enough time to animate that, sadly, but hey, I won't disappear like that again. I, I mean, I'll at least try not to, you know, make my new longest video ever and completely change my aesthetic, you know? I feel like this is less of a changing aesthetic and more of a discovering one. Like, I feel like I didn't have a direction to begin with, and this is kind of leading me down my own unique path, and that's exciting, but anyways this uh is once again going on too long this is like my third time recording this and so i'm going to stop now i'm gonna shut up now you all sleep tight uh assuming it's also 1 50 in the morning for you if not enjoy your day enjoy your night enjoy your morning and i'll see you in the next one. Oh man oh yeah get that smash reveal tomorrow don't we Who's the final fighter gonna be, baby? It's gonna be I, I, 100%. All right, good night, bye. <laughs>